All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. This is the first in our fall series, uh, Bright Space, Space Blitz. And so Jamie is joining us. Jamie is our online program manager. She's gonna be sharing with you some terrific tips to help you with saving a little bit of time this semester and beyond. So thanks Jamie for joining us and sharing all this great information you have. Well, I hope it's great. I hope it's helpful to people. Um, so as, as Aaron said, um, my name's Jamie. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, Aaron's going to interrupt me if there's anything like I need to stop and repeat anything that I've said. Uh, when I was coming up with this title, I was really trying to think of of how we can make it clear like there are there are tools and efficiencies within Brightspace that can make our lives um, as faculty members much easier. Just as for a point of reference, I've been teaching online since 2003, so officially over 20 years now. And I'm currently teaching some courses in Brightspace. I've been teaching courses in Brightspace for the past three years. And um, I, I I love it. It's one of my favorite learning management systems that I've ever taught in. And I'm really grateful for some of these tools. And, and so I'm going to show you some of the, the things that I do in my own courses and, and some of the things that I know other people are doing in their courses. And some might be helpful to you and others you might just keep on the back burner a little bit later. But let's get this started. So first question is, what is a blitz, right? So we, it's the German word for lightning. And um, it's also a, a type of chess. And if you've ever seen blitz chess being played, it's a, it's a way for people to hone their skills and kind of understand how to make moves under pressure and under uh, strict time constraints. And it's also a play in American football. So there's a blitz, there's a concentrated effort, you put an extra player on to try to try to interrupt the passer, right? And that that point then is to make a really concerted effort to get something done in, in a little bit faster time frame than you might otherwise. And if you're like me and we're alive in the 70s, you might also know it from the ballroom blitz. And if you are now singing that song in your head, you're welcome. It's been in my head for weeks now that I've been working on this presentation. And um, it's actually not a bad one. And you can also quite easily replace a ballroom blitz with bright space blitz. So now that's really stuck in your head. So good luck with that. The actual definition of a bright of a blitz is a sudden, energetic, uh, concerted effort, typically on a specific task. It's fast. Uh, intensive non-military campaign. And so I think when we're thinking about a bright space blitz in this case, we're gonna be thinking about how we as faculty members can put in that sudden energetic amount of, of energy and uh, focus on a task to get it done in a really quick amount of time. There we go. So I see some people already started this, but I would love it if we could get some introductions going there in the um, in the chat. And if you could put your name, your role, what campus you're from, and I would also like you to consider if lightning could strike you and give you a superpower, uh, what would that superpower be and what would you want your superhero name to be? Um, I, you'll see I have the Bright Space Moose, uh, he's their mascot. And he has a little name tag on it. His name is Blitzen. And that is, of course, German for lightning. So one of Santa's reindeer is actually called lightning. The other one's called thunder. Um, I can't remember which one off the top of my head. Um, but at any rate, if you would go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat. I, ooh, teleportation. I would take it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, especially because my kid, my oldest uh, child now lives 10 hours away. I would definitely take that. I'd see her every day for dinner, whether she wanted me to or not. All right. Um, TARDIS tag along. That's great. All right. I'll check those out later. I think people are already having a sense of humor about that. I do want to tell you before I start talking about what we're going to cover in the agenda and start talking about specific tools that while we are, uh, for the digital learning environment or the DLE, we are all using Brightspace. Some campuses uh, choose to present the tools in a slightly different order or in a different menu, et cetera. So you might, some of the things I'm going to talk about, you might not be able to access from the nav bar. You might have to go to your course admin page, or it might not be a feature that is accessible to you on your campus. Additionally, um, I'm working, uh, my course that I'll be showing you today is in the CPD tenant of the DLE and our color scheme is blue and, and white. And 
your campus might look entirely different because your campus might be red and white or it might be green and gray or or something along those lines. So just be aware that uh, based on design standards, et cetera, or other choices that the campus make, we might have a little bit of a difference between uh, what you're seeing and what I'm showing. No, what you're seeing on your screen and in your instance of Brightspace and what I'm showing from mine. Oh, I don't know where my agenda went. Hang on just a second. <laughs> Did I lose my agenda? Uh, yeah, I... Did I skip right over it? Maybe I did. Um, but anyway, for the agenda today, we're going to do these introductions. And then I've broken out the, the things that I wanted to show you about Brightspace, about time saving strategies into um, doing more with student progress and reporting, understanding where you can find the information um, and where it might be most beneficial, depending on what your task is. Uh, some uh, time saving strategies for grading, course management customizing your course, and then we'll have time for questions at the end, hopefully. All right, with that, I'm going to pop over here into Brightspace. And can everybody see Brightspace now? I'm not sure if I shared my, okay, perfect. So let's talk about uh, how we determine student progress, attendance, or, or a retrieve information for the census data that we have to report back to our campuses uh, for financial aid purposes. There are a couple of different ways to do it. And the first is to go to your class list or roster. Now, if this uh, item is not available to you on your navigation bar, it should be available to you on your course administration panel. So if you go to course admin, you should be able to find it under class list here. Uh, on my tenant in Brightspace, it's listed as roster. It's the same thing. It's just a different, slightly different name to make it a little easier for our faculty here at the Center for Professional Development. On this particular page, your class list, you have a couple things that uh, jump out right at you here as you're, as you're looking at the class list. First, you can print this class list out, which can be helpful if this is a if you're using Brightspace to supplement your face-to-face -face course, you'll have a, a list of all your students. Some people might grab that from their student information system, but you also have it here in printable within Brightspace. You won't have uh, the ability to enroll users, by the way, I'm in as a um, system administrator in this instance, so the ad participants is probably locked down for your role as a faculty member. But from this class list, you'll see that you can actually select all of your students here and you can email them directly from your class list. So you don't have to go up to your course email up here and then go to add users and go through that whole, whole rigmarole. If you're already here and you want to email your whole class list or even just a handful of students, um, you can do so and just click email, it pops up in a brand new window. It's added those students in the BCC field so that uh, their identities are kept um, kind of private from each other. The other thing that you can do here is, um, at, you can of course print here, but you can uh, do something that makes our life much easier. If you have a student who presents you with um, an accommodations letter from the student support office on your campus, Say for example, I had a student this semester send me that, that letter um, and say that they need time and a half on their quizzes or exams in the semester. And I could go to each of the four exams I have in that particular course, and I would go to each of the, and edit that, that exam, add her in or that student in with special um, access in there. And I would have to do that four different times. Or what I could do is I could come directly to my roster or my class list and say um, my demo student, demo Tamara here, needs an accommodation on her quizzes of, of 1.5 times. I click on the chevron to the right of the student name. And I scroll down to the bottom where it says edit accommodations. Then I can say modify the time limit by 1.5 1 1 times. Oh, I need the one there too, don't I? There, the 1.5 times and click save. And now what Brightspace will do for me is every single quiz that I have in my course 
will have that uh, accommodation set for that particular student. There are, of course, other special access um, options that we have for students in quizzes. So if they need, you know, a, an alteration in the due date or access to the particular quiz or um, maybe so that it's not timed, et cetera. You can always do that at the individual quiz, but this is a really quick and easy way for you to add those accommodations for someone who needs just a 1.5 or two times the amount of, of time per quiz. Nice uh, time saver there. What we can also do here is uh, click into a this link here called class engagement. And when I click onto that, that button, it's going to show this information to me. It's going to let me know, A, that no students have visited this course in the last seven days, which is fine for me, right? This isn't my actual course that I'm teaching here. And it gives me an idea of how my grades are distributed across my, my student roster here. I can scroll down really quickly and get an overview of how my students are doing in the course and uh, view whether or not they have visited in the last 30 days or eight months, two years, et cetera, and then give me a quick idea of what their uh, discussion participation is. From this page, I could also email. So if I notice that uh, my student hadn't accessed the course, I could click on those two students right here, and I could email the selected students from here. This is a nice way when you are, you know, just trying to see, particularly in that first week or two, trying to see who's accessed your course or not. I like to come to this page to do so. Uh, to get back there, I'm going to click on to roster again. Sorry, it's thinking. And then I can just see uh, from this quick page, I can still see when they last accessed the course. You can see uh, Amir hasn't logged in since 22 and Tamara uh, hasn't logged in since 22 as well. That's when we were doing the bulk of our workshops where we had to have test students in so we could show you what it looked like as a student. Any questions on what you can do with the class list information to help you as you're kind of reviewing student progress, attendance, or census data? Please feel, oh, Donna, yeah. Donna? Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to say um, under enrollment status, I found this very useful because underneath the list, when you have to scroll way down when you go into enrollment status, it shows any students that were unenrolled from the class. So mm. if you had a student that was like dropped for non attending, you could check to see if they had been withdrawn. So that's a great tool as well. That's a good one. Thank you, uh, Donna. I had that on my list and I skipped right over it. So that's another button that's available to you on your um, class list page next to class engagement. You'll see enrollment statistics. If you click on that, then you'll see uh, what students have been dropped there. Thanks, Donna, for adding that. So, Jamie, just a quick comment in the chat. Danny is saying on their screen um, for Fredonia, um, they don't have roster showing. It's under course tools. So yeah, that, so that could be true for other campuses. Yeah, it's going to be true for quite a few campuses. Some campuses didn't put the class list on the nav bar, but it's always going to be available to you under course administration. Um, your course admin panel will have links to almost all of the tools I'm talking about today. So you can get to class list from your course admin page. Um, part of the problem was I think that uh, some campuses didn't want students to have access to that class list. And um, Anyway, it, it's here for you. You can always access it that way. And we do have another hand raised as well. Okay. Um, yeah, hi, Victoria Hayes from SUNY Potsdam. I haven't clicked on the email in Brightspace because does the email automatically go to the Brightspace email? Uh, yes, email is a little complicated and it's not part of my uh, agenda today. I will take that question at the end of the session today, if that's we all right. We only use the SUNY pause. I only use it like I, I'm not using two emails. So that's my concern with yeah. that. So it doesn't make it easier for me. Just a okay. question. Yeah, no, that's, that's totally fine. So if I were to click from the class list and email, it's the Brightspace email. They might receive a notification in their external email. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I see your your post there, Catherine. Engagement button isn't showing. I can show you in an, in another tool how to get to that engagement information as well. So I'm going to pop over then into class progress, and I'm I am going to remind you again some of the things that I'm showing you might not appear the same on your campus as they do on at the CPDs. Every campus again controls it a little bit differently. Uh, you might have to poke through a couple of different tools in order to get get through that. All right, let's talk about class progress. And this is a tool that students also have access to. Um, when you click into class progress, however, it looks entirely different than what the student will see. When you click into course progress, which is also available uh, here, or class progress is available on your course admin page, your class progress will show you, wow, it's taking a really long time, is going to give you an overview of all of the users or, or students in your particular class. For a student, they don't see this page. They're only gonna see the class progress for themselves. But what you can see immediately when you click into class progress is the name of your student. If you hover over their name, you're gonna notice or over their uh, icon that you can send them an email or an instant message, or it'll take you directly to their individual user progress page. You can also determine their system access. And by the way, this is system access. So this is Brightspace access, not necessarily course access. That's in something entirely different. And an overview of how much of your content they've completed, how they've done in quizzing, and their overall grades. Hovering over these bars, you can see that it's going to display what that particular, I can't say that word, particular gradable activity is and how they performed on it. But say I want to dive into a little bit more depth, someone who has a little bit more feedback here. So Jane's student here. Uh, to see more about Jane, I click on her name here. It's a link. And now if Jane were logged in, this is what she would see when she uh, clicks onto class progress. She would skip that overview that we get as faculty members. And on this particular page, say for example, I'm looking as a faculty member and I really wanna see, I'm, I have a meeting with Jane later today and she's asking about her grade and how she can make improvements in there. I can look through here and expand menus out to see how she's doing on particular gradable activities. She seems to be doing really well in her discussions. It seems to be more that she's struggling with um, some other items that is that are impacting her current grade there. Uh, I can take a peek at my at the content, see how she what she's visiting for how long and for what amount of time, because this can be really helpful if someone's saying, you know, I'm in the course and I'm clicking through stuff. But if they're only spending, you know, one to two seconds per page, they're probably not engaging with those materials as deeply as they, they need to, to be successful. So this uh, gives us a lot of information about um, how the student's interacting with that content and allows us to give the student that feedback. But they could also see that for themselves as well. So we can see um, you could dial in a little bit further into discussions, assignments, and quizzes, and see more about what their um, what their performance looks like and the grades that they're earning. Scrolling down even further, you can see that uh, we have um, their login history, system access, and course access. And this is information that's helpful to us as faculty. Uh, the campus that I teach at, we have to do um, attendance data in the SIS or student information system at week three, then again at um, midterms and one other time in between week three and midterms, I forget what week, but um, so I tend to come to the class progress and check out course access, although there's another tool that makes it even faster for me and I'll show you that in just a minute. But this is gonna let me know that the last time Jane came in here was on January 30th, uh, 2024. So class progress can be helpful in that in those terms, and you could also print this out, by the way, if you wanted to have a meeting where you provided the student with this kind of feedback, you know, in, in paper form. Um, students also have access to this in Brightspace, et cetera. Another little quick feature here I wanted to show you is you can navigate between your students on your class list here in class progress, rather than clicking back out to class progress and clicking on the new next student, it's gonna take you in the next um, alphabetical order student on your class list there. 
also here on the class progress. And I'm only gonna speak about this really briefly because I'm gonna go into it in a little bit more depth later today. You can use agents to automate feedback. And if you don't know what an agent is or an intelligent agent is in Brightspace, it's a tool that allows you to um, set, a, set a time, a date, an activity, et cetera, that's going to trigger a report. And that report can either be just left for you to view, or it can actually trigger automatic emails that are sent to students. So one, one way you might use an agent is to say that, uh, please identify students who uh, receive less than a 72% on this particular exam. And um, maybe I just wanna see what those students are, in which case I, it just has a list that's created for me. Or identify students that received a 93 and above on this, this quiz. And I might have it automatically send an email out to those students saying, hey, congratulations, I see that you did really well on this exam, keep up the hard work, um, I appreciate your efforts, et cetera. So uh, I'll, I'll talk more about agents later on, but it's just a way for us to have Brightspace do some things for us in the background, timed out so that we don't have to think about them during this semester. Any questions about class progress before we continue? All right. The next thing I wanted to show you is course overview. And this is actually the tool I use uh, when I am going to do attendance for my students in the student information system. For me, this uh, widget is located on the course homepage. You might not have access to it on your course uh, on your course homepage, uh, but that, that's a choice that your um, distance learning team has, has made. But if you do have access to it, on your course homepage, you'll see this course overview widget here. And I, you can see that one person has visited the course today. No quizzes have been sub submitted today. And this is where you can view course engagement as well as course access. So I'm going to first do class engagement here. And I think that the class um, engagement here is more detailed than what you see um, in other places, but this gives me like no students have accessed the course in seven days. Here's my grade distribution. This again tells me the current grade, when they visited in their discussion and peer replies here. I could email from here. I wouldn't be able to submit attendance from here. If you'll notice, I don't have an actual date. Um, like, well, I do have an actual date, but the course not accessed uh, is a little problematic, but I could use, I guess, this date. What I tend to use rather than that is, look back. <laughs> I didn't get scrolled too fast, course access. And so when I click on course access, this is what I see. And I like this page because I'm able to export it uh, to Excel or as a uh, comma separated value, um, which uh, file, which tends to open up then as a, an Excel file. But this gives me a good idea of what my participation has looked like over the last two years that this course has been active. And yours won't look like this. This is a training course, but your course would probably be spread out over 15 weeks. And it will kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. You can see that we were using this course really uh, regularly when we were doing a ton of trainings and it's kind of uh, died down as the implementation uh, phase of the DLE has come to a close. I'm able to uh, kind of do get a report from a certain date, so a start date and an end date. So this is why it's really helpful if you have a census date, they tell you, you which students have been active between these uh, two time periods. You can set those dates and you can select a role. You'll have way fewer than me. And then um, it will generate a report for you that you can use to submit attendance. So this, um, this is a very, very helpful report for you, probably a couple of times a semester. Jamie, while you're still there, yeah, uh, does it tell you which students access the course on the particular dates? Um, do, 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 do. I don't know the answer to that question. Let me... I wonder if that's part of the report that can be run. Yeah, I've, I don't want to, I don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. Okay. Hang on just a second. 
And while you're doing that, the question about the class engagement, is this a different class engagement than the one in the roster or from the it roster? It is slightly. So um, it is, it gives you a little bit more detail than the one from your class roster. So that's why it's a little bit more helpful um, as you're looking at the class engagement. And that's where I uh, do my attendance from. This okay. class. And then um, another question, how do we get, um, how do you get there from course, uh, course admin? How do you get there? So you can't get to this one from course admin. And that's okay. because it's, it's only a widget on your course homepage. So if okay. it's not on your course homepage, it's not one that your campus has activated. Um, so it's only, this, as I was saying, as I was about to start this tool, this is only helpful to you if your campus has it enabled. That's that widget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not in course admin. It's it's just a um it's just a widget here. Okay. And Casey did do the export um and it just tells the number of students. So yeah. okay. not specific students. Thanks for testing that for us, Casey. Okay, I think we're caught up on questions. All right, great. So right now I have to log out as myself because as I mentioned, I am currently teaching um in Brightspace. So I can't show you these next tools from my account. Oh, that is not the right one. Hang on just a second. Um, because I can't show you student data, but I'm going to log in as a fake faculty member here really quickly so that I can show you some things about grading. Um, grading in Brightspace for me is a breeze. When I saw them presenting their tool uh, a couple of years ago, I think back in 2020, I was cheering at my desk, so excited uh, because it offers some really exceptionally helpful ways for us to grade efficiently and effectively. So um, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about a tool called Quick Eval. And what I found in talking with faculty and watching how faculty interact with Brightspace um, is they tend to go to the tool itself to grade. So if you have a discussion, you're going to go to discussions and grade, and then you're going to go to assignments to grade assignments and go to quizzes to grade any um, manually graded quizzes that you have. And that works. But I honestly find the Quick Eval tool to be way more effective than, than using those individual tools. I go to those tools for the discussion area or the assignments area, the quiz area, um, if I need to interact directly with the gradable activity. But if I am, so if, say in discussions and I wanna read what people are posting and I wanna add some kudos or make a correction, I go to the discussions area to do that. But if I'm going to assess anyone, I always go to Quick Eval and I'll show you why. So. Um, when I am logged in as a faculty member, I can see on my institution homepage, I can see Quick Eval here in the nav bar. But if I'm already in one of my courses, um, it might be located in a slightly different place for you. So you might see it on your nav bar directly. It might be under course tools, uh, in which case you can see I have Quick Eval here, but I can also get to Quick Eval from my course admin page. It's really going to depend on how your campus has it set up. So you can see that I have Quick Eval right here, and I'm going to click into Quick Eval. And Quick Eval is great in particular if you're teaching more than one course. So uh, say, for example, I teach uh, a handful of courses at a, at a campus, and I want to see all of the things that I have to grade for all of my courses all in one place, I can click on this ellipses icon in the top right-hand corner of my Quick Eval page and select the multi-course Quick Eval. And what this will do is going to show me all of the different courses that I'm enrolled in as a faculty member that have something for me to grade. And so in particular, if you're teaching two sections of the same course, you could see that oh, week one discussion for course A, uh, section A, and another week one discussion for course A, section B. Um, and so you can kind of lump them all together rather than having to go to a different course, et cetera, and start grading. You'll just have to click into the other bar of it, but uh, you don't have to click into a different course. And so some of the things that I find so helpful about Quick Eval is first, you'll notice that you have a toggle here. You can switch between views. 
And the uh, first view that you're going to come in to see is the submissions and where you can see the student listed out. And this is OK, but I think that the activities view is the most effective view for me to get an idea overall of what I have to do uh, for my course. As I scroll down my list, I can see I have two different courses that I'm teaching that have something for me to grade or interact with. And um, I can see that this one's a discussion, this one's a discussion, a quiz, and a quiz. And what I then can see is any new submissions. So you can see under the NCC discussion, there's one new post that I need to read. If there were a brand new quiz submission, there would be a, a number one next to that quiz sum submission there and any assignments, et cetera. Next to that, then you'll see these gauges and these gauges help you understand as a faculty member, how many of your students um, have submitted this work, right? So I have three students on this particular roster and one of them has submitted it. Um, down below, you'll see that I have nine students on my roster in the Illuminations training course and two of the students have completed that work. The next gauge over is the evaluated uh, column. And this is gonna let you know how many of the submissions you've graded. And sometimes this is going to be a little bit different. Like one out of three students have submitted this discussion and you might end up with three out of three evaluated, right? Because you gave zeros to students who didn't submit. And then we have finally the published column. And this lets me know that I have actually published the the feedback for my students to my students. Um, and uh, that's, I'll show you that in just a moment, why that's different than sometimes the evaluated. Hovering over this bar, you'll notice that the options change a little bit. So now I have more actions, a submission list and evaluate all. And I like to uh, click on the more actions here First, it allows me to publish. So if I've gone through and I've graded everybody's discussion and now I'm ready to publish it to everybody, I can publish everybody's all at once rather than clicking through every single student to publish. But I also have this lovely button here that's called Dismiss Until. And this allows me to keep my quick eval page nice and tight. If I click Dismiss Until, I could always switch it to next submission. So maybe I've graded everybody and I know that maybe two or three other students might submit it, but I don't want to see the assignment on my quick eval until they've actually submitted. I could select next submission. What I tend to do in my classes is students start participating before, you know, like I, I open a module on Monday. And so people might be participating in the next, the current week's discussion before I've actually graded the discussion from last week, which I do on Mondays. So I like to get the, the, discussion up for the current week off of my quick eval. So I might say, I'm going to remove this until Sunday at midnight when it's due, and it's going to come off of my quick eval page. And then I don't have to worry about it, but it will come back when it's time for me to grade. So that's just one way I like to keep my quick eval page nice and tidy. And then um, what I want to do for you next is show you how you would grade from here. Uh, hovering over the bar, for this discussion here, you might be kind of inclined to go into submission list and that's okay, but the, the best tool I have found here in the quick eval tool is to click on evaluate all unless it's for an assignment where I've graded a number of other students already and I only need to grade this new submission. For assignments, if, if you've done that, if you've graded maybe 12 out of 19 that have been submitted and that 13th student submits it later that day, you can come in and just click on that new submission. It's gonna take you right to that student. You can grade it and move on from there. But I'm gonna treat um, this one as I wanna to go to evaluate all. And it pulls up this great grading page. You can get back to quick eval this way. I'm not gonna go through how you grade entirely. I have videos and, and help documents on that that I can show you how to access. But um, this is where you can navigate between your users. You can give a grade. And you can choose to publish or save as draft. And it's the save as draft that's kind of the key when you are um, clicking through and grading your students. I tend to click save draft as I go through my, my class list, get all of the grading done, go back then to quick eval. And then uh, that's when I do the publish all. Um, 
and the reason I do that is, you know, as, as you grade, you might find that you're a little bit um, more, uh, <laughs> maybe more uh, uh, detail oriented as you start grading and you kind of filter off and you realize you weren't quite fair. So you want to go back and readjust or you realize two or three uh, students in that you actually didn't include that as part of your question. So you're marking things wrong on earlier submissions. It's just a way to allow you to make sure that you're being as unbiased and and as fair as possible during your grading. And so I tend to hold off on the publication until the very end. Um, all right, so I'm not gonna go into the full quick eval. I have a full video and some help documents on it. So I'm gonna, I see that there are some questions yeah, in the chat. Oh, sure. oh, thanks, Erin. Yeah, um, no worries. They're, um, they're all related to quick eval. So the first one is um, Casey uses this and enjoys it, but it seems to stop working when the course has ended. And, and we're wondering if that's like a limitation of the tools at a D2L thing, or can campuses set that? So Casey's example is that the semester ends on a Friday night, the course ends in bright space, right? So when they go in at the last, to grade last minute item Saturday morning, they can't use quick eval. Yeah, that's a that's why also when I'm not teaching an active course, I can't show it from my own account because unless you have an active course, you can't use quick eval. So that is a limitation of the tool. I will show you some different ways to grade um, in just a moment that will kind of work a little bit better for you than necessarily going to the tool itself and sorting through all of that. But yeah, that is one of the, the limitations for sure. Yeah. So then Amanda's question is about uh, group projects. If she has a team project, they don't show up in Quick Eval to, to be able to grade. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I the next tool I show you will help with that. Um, Same approach, yeah. I've never graded groups before, so I don't know that I've ever encountered that. That's something new for me. So thank you for, for sharing. That is interesting. We'll have to investigate that one too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, um, uh, let's see, we have another one here. So um, Quickie Vale does not always recognize new submissions for a particular activity. That's interesting. It should. Yeah. Uh, uh, so if that's the case, you should definitely contact the help desk. There's, mm -hmm. There would be an issue then with uh, maybe a setting in your, your grade book or in the gradable activity itself. It should show up. You might not see your quizzes show here uh, if they're all automatically graded questions within it. The only time you would see a quiz quest, a quiz show up here is if you needed, if you had selected that you have to publish, that the grades aren't automatically published, it will show up, or if you have manually graded questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely so, uh, Aradna, it should show up. And if it's not, that's a problem we can probably solve for you. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. We're all set. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, I will say, <laughs> as an anecdote, I my my sister also teaches online using Brightspace, and I was sitting next to her one weekend while she was grading, and she's like, "Ugh, this takes forever." And I was like, "What are you doing?" And so I showed her this, and she she gave me a huge hug. So anyway, it does save time. It does make people's life a little bit easier. I I do encourage you to check it out. So uh, other in individuals were indicating that they don't. Uh, use quick eval, it's not working for them, et cetera. What happens after the course has closed, the quick eval doesn't work, et cetera. Uh, there are other uh, ways to grade that are quite efficient or say, for example, you're grading uh, something that's been submitted face-to-face -face, or a presentation that's been done face-to-face, -face, et cetera. There are some different ways to grade that are a little bit easier for you. Um, oh, good, Lena. I'm so glad that's gonna be helpful to you. So I'm going to go into my grades area of this training course. And when I come into here, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about grading from the grade book. We have two different ways from the grade book. And the first is to be switched into what's called standard view. Currently we're in, I'm sorry, we're in standard view. We have to switch to spreadsheet view. Um, currently we're in standard view, which allows you to see if there's been a submission, something you need to take a look at still. I'm going to switch to spreadsheet view which means that I am now able to type directly into the cells here of the, of the gradable activity 
of a particular student. And when you type those numbers in for your students, you can click save and move forward. By the way, if you try to navigate away after you've typed in some grades, it's gonna say like, hey, don't forget to click save. And, and that's okay, like particularly if it's something like you're, you're taking attendance, who's here in the Zoom room and you just go down the list and click, click, click and you give everybody uh, a one or a zero or whatever you do. But I do like another little tool. It's a little bit hidden in here. Um, and it's where you can grade from the grade book here. So this is a gradable activity. Let me find one that's blank. Do I have one that's blank? I do. Look, um, so say this is a gradable activity that I want to uh, supply some grades for here. So I click on the Chevron right next to the, the gradable activity title, and I choose Enter Grades. And this brings me to this full page. And as I scroll down, I have my class list. I have all of these other options, but I want to show you a little secret button here that you might not click into, and it's called Show Details and Overall Feedback. When I expand that out, it's going to give me some information about this great item anyway. But what it also gives me is this little box uh, for overall feedback here. And some of the feedback we got from students at our Otter Institute this summer is they want to know how other people were doing in the, in the course. And I don't know that they necessarily need to see other students' grades, you know, how they fit in the median, et cetera. But maybe they want to understand, am I the only one who was confused about this? Or am I... Am I understanding it the same way that other students are understanding it? And so this overall feedback is a great place to provide that information to your students. So say at the end of the discussion, uh, you've graded it and you notice that there were some themes there, like people truly understood um, like concept A and there was some misconceptions about concept B. Uh, this overall feedback is a nice place to provide that where every student is going to see it and you don't have to then provide it to each individual student. We do need, need to be mindful, however, that this feedback area is visible to every student. So you should not uh, put anything that would be private feedback for a student. So I might say, uh, great work this week, class. Um, the themes that emerged, dot, 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 um, I noticed some challenges in understanding, dot, 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 et cetera. Um, so I just saw Lena say, how did you get to this page? I'll take you right back there, one moment. So I'm in my grade book, and it doesn't matter if you're in standard or spreadsheet view, by the way, for this. You navigate to the gradable activity you want to uh, provide feedback in, click the chevron to the right, and click enter grades. And uh, this button is, or that field is hidden unless you expand this uh, show details and overall feedback menu. So there, that's my general feedback that I give for every single student. Now here's another uh, feature of this grades area that's great. So remember how I was talking about it's an attendance, right? And you're, you're gonna go down and add ones and zeros. And you notice out of 35 students in your class, 34 are present. You could click everybody's name here at the top and say set grades. And you could give everybody an A, or I'm gonna clear those. You could select all 34, except for the one person that wasn't there that day and click set grades and give them a 14 and click save. And so you can see how if you have a larger class and everybody's gonna get the same grade except for maybe one or two students, this is a time saver. In addition, um, I could, anybody that is selected here, I could clear their grades. I could add feedback for all of those students. And in here, then I could use that lovely little uh, replace string called first name and Great to see you in class today, right? And so what Brightspace is gonna do is it's going to replace all of these characters with the student who's viewing this page with their name. And so it personalizes it. And I'll put that here in the chat here. And that's called a replace string. 
So you can see now that these two students have received a grade. You can see their feedback here. Um, you can exempt or unexempt students from this page. You can email students from this page. Now, if you're grading from here and say, for example, I forget who said it a little bit earlier, you have a submission. Um, it's after the course is closed and you need to go back through and grade and quick eval is turned off for you. You can come to this page and for all of the submissions for that particular assignment, you could click on that icon. It's going to take you to the completion summary. Oh, sorry, this is actually for a quiz, so it looks a little bit different, but I could grade directly from here too. All right. Any questions about this particular tool? Because I don't want to forget, I want to show you one other thing to help at the end of the semester or when someone has submitted a whole bunch of stuff at once. So say it at the end of the semester or even in the middle of the semester, a student missed about three weeks of work and they were excused, they were out ill or some other uh, significant complication, um, it, you know, they encountered in their life. And say uh, Demo Amir here submitted all that work at once. I could go to Quick Eval and grade each of those submissions there, or I could go into each of the columns here and click grade. But what I can also do is, um, sorry, click on their name rather from my, my roster here, and I can grade everything from here. So all of the students, I can view the submission. It's going to open up in a brand new wi window. I can grade it. I can click, uh, you know, publish to that student. It's going to come here into this page. So this is really helpful if it's one student that you have to do some bulk grading in, versus one assignment that you have to do some bulk grading in. If that makes it, if that makes sense, the the difference between the two, why you would use this one versus the one for the column. All right, any questions about that? The next thing I wanna show you about the gradebook is a really new feature. And so if you've been teaching in Brightspace for the last year or more, you might, you wouldn't have seen this. It, it just got launched at the end of the summer, just before the semester started. And so I do wanna highlight uh, something that's changed in the gradebook. Um, if you turn this on now, you have to be a little bit careful because it's not retroactive. It only works moving forward. Um, but anyway, when you set up your grade book, there were two options for how to treat uh, items that were, um, were ungraded, right? So you could have it treat ungraded items at zero or drop ungraded items. But now there's a new option. I wanna show you that today. So you, you have an option, you can go through the setup wizard and it's gonna take you through the seven steps and it's gonna ask you this question that I'm gonna show you here, or you can be in your grade book and click on settings. And in settings, you'll find this option here in the calculation options. Are we doing on time? Oh, we're running out of time. Um, down here, you're gonna see under grade calculations that you have the drop ungraded items uh, here, which is what we recommend, by the way. And the new one is the automatic zero for missing submissions. And what this will do moving forward from this date, if you turn this on, is it's going to apply a grade of zero to um, submissions that are um, that haven't been submitted after a particular due date. This only works for assignments and quizzes. It does not work for discussions. Uh, you'll still have to add zeros for students who didn't submit their discussions. But for uh, assignments and quizzes, once that due date passes, Brightspace will add a zero for you. Yes, it's great. Uh, this is my first semester using it, and I'm so excited. <laughs> so, all right. We are running out of time here. Um, there are so many time-saving things. I don't have time to tell you about all of them. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to... Uh, show you really quickly is something in the content area. It's for navigation. And it's a tool that a lot of people miss. So say, for example, I'm in this particular module and I click into this uh, page about axolotls. 
when you are in a content page in Brightspace, and if that's not the cutest face you've ever seen, I don't know what to tell you, um, but there's, you can navigate, right? A couple different ways. You can navigate using your breadcrumb trail. You can navigate going forward and backward of, of items within a particular module. This little side panel over here in the far left is hidden, right? It's really hard to see, but when you expand that out, it allows you to navigate, to jump to a page in a module without having to click, 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 right? I can jump. I can also jump to another module in my course and select a specific item there. So just know that this little side panel menu is a little hard to see sometimes, but can be really, really effective in helping you navigate your course. I know, right? It's great. All right, last, go there again. Um, so here I'm in a content page. So I clicked into content, into a, a module, and now I'm in this axolotl video page, right? And I want to navigate to the last page in this module. I come over here where there's this little triangle right here, and I expand that out, and I can navigate between modules here. And this is the module I'm currently in. And I'm like, ooh, right? And I can then skip like five pages and go to that page without having to click, click, click. All right. The last two things I think I can squeeze in here today are uh, bulk edit and manage dates. And I'm going to skip bulk edit first, um, but I'm going to go right to manage dates. And you can get to that from your course admin panel for sure. Other people might have it in your course tools, et cetera. But this is a tool that I highly recommend that you use at the start of the semester. Before you open up your course to students, say you've pulled in your course from last fall and you've got it all active here, but you want to make sure that all of your dates for this current semester are going to line up with your syllabus. So go to Manage Dates here. And um, you'll notice that it's got a list of all of the items in my course, the dates, times, et cetera, here. I can filter these out, by the way, by specific tools. So if I only wanted to check the, the dates for my announcements or my assignments all in one place, I could do so. But I'm going to do it for all. And I just want to talk to you about bulk offset dates. The convenience of this is I know that I taught this course last fall and I'm teaching it this fall. So I click bulk offset dates. Hold please. Why are not working? <laughs> Amazing. So it's supposed to pull up a little window. Hang on, let me log out as my test self. I can do this as myself. Oh, maybe Elizabeth. Oh, yours is also not working. That is helpful to me to hear. So I'm going to go into my hair and training course. And I'm going to go to my course admin. And I'm going to go to manage dates. Heather is saying that she had to I did all. have to check the box. Yeah. How many times have I done this? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, um, I can select the dates that I want to offset. And for me, I would just choose all of those. And I'm going to calculate the range between two dates. I know that my course started last year. Um, it was 8, 26. I'm making this up off the top of my head, by the way, uh, 23. And I'm going to select that it started at um, one minute after midnight. And then my course this year is starting on 8, 27, 2024. And of course, I want to select that same moment in time. And I click save. What it does is it offsets all of those dates for me. And it might not be 100% accurate, accurate, but it's going to get me within one or two days of the current semester. And so then I can take my syllabus and go down through those dates and make them entirely accurate. So here is where I would then uh, filter and select a specific tool. And I'm going to do all of my announcements in one fell swoop here. Um, I click announcements. I apply that filter. 
And now I have all my announcements. I'm going to go down my syllabus and I'm going to check the start date and the end date, start date, end date, all the way down through and see if uh, everything's accurate. And if not, I can just click on that and make an adjustment really quickly. So this, um, this manage dates area is incredibly helpful. And I, I hope that you uh, take advantage of it. Um, the next thing is uh, just, I'm going to give you an FYI. Anywhere that you see bulk edit in your course, uh, you can see it in your content area. You can see it in um, in your manage grades area. You can see it in your discussions, no, no, your assignments and quizzes area, et cetera. That is uh, intended for you to be able to save time. So say, for example, in quizzes, I can select all of these and click bulk edit. And it's meant to save me time. I can adjust the name. I can adjust whether or not it's hidden or available, the number of attempts, yeah. Yes, exactly, Brett, and thank you for adding that. All right, I didn't have enough time to cover all the things I wanted to cover today. <laughs> but if you can tell from my enthusiasm and how much, um, like, I love this system. It has changed uh, how much time it takes me to teach my class, which gives me more time to engage directly with my students. And really, that's what brings me to teaching is is not the managerial stuff. It's doing the, the like, getting into the learning with the students. And that's my favorite thing. And Brightspace has allowed me to do that more. And I love that. All right. So, um, I know that's helpful to you. I hope this was helpful to you today, this this workshop. I do have materials that can co correspond to that, and I will get that to Erin with links to how to use the tools that I showed today, and she can send that out. So I hope it was helpful. Yeah, that uh, would be great. Questions? Thank you, Jamie. I mean, we, um, we post the video. I just put in the link, but there's a lot of thank yous, so I'll put it in again. <laughs> um, the link to the webinar, webinar recording. We also post any resources from... The presenters in uh, with the recording. So you can get all of that at the same site. It's the same site that you registered for the workshop so or for the webinars. Um, and so you can go there and see where next one is coming up on October 10th. And that is going to be on AI and assessment. So we hope you'll join us uh, for that as well. Um, and put it in a third time. Third time's the charm. So thanks so much, Jamie. Um, yeah, it was a pleasure. It was really fun a wealth of tips for everybody. We may need a part two. <laughs> yeah, a ton. All right. Thanks, everybody.